Good afternoon. My name is Brian Carey, VP of Marketing at Unbound Medicine, and I want to thank you for joining us today for the latest presentation in the Unbound Medicine webinar series, Funky Pox. Our guest today is Dr. Paul Alwater, a friend of Unbound Medicine and a professor and clinical director of infectious disease at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Paul and Unbound have been working together to deliver the Johns Hopkins Antibiotic Guide for over 10 years, updating the content every month, which has been particularly important during COVID. Today's webinar has been pre-recorded. However, if you have questions, please submit them in the Q&A section, and we will post, post both the questions and the answers online. Okay, let's get started, shall we? Thank you for joining me, Dr. Alwater. Thank you, Brian. I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in to this webinar for what no doubt uh, is a uh, moving target in terms of understanding information regarding both, you know, the epidemiology, diagnosis, and management. So this is relevant as of the recording on July 14th, 2022. Um, Monkeypox uh, got its name a long time ago, and the World Health Organization said it will be renamed. Um, and I think that's likely appropriate, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about why that's the case. But let's step back for a moment and speak of history. Um, the reason it was uh, described as monkeypox was that in the 1950s, uh, it was first isolated from a primate, but the first human infection was in 1970. And what you can see on this slide and the next slide are initial descriptions that were most common uh, in what's now called the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but also in other countries of West Africa. And it's quite periodic, but you got the idea from the 1970s through the 1990s that there was an increase. Now, interestingly, there are two glades uh, which is a virologic term to say there's enough differences amongst the monkeypox in terms of how it behaves uh, to separate them. And there is one called Central Africa, mainly afflicting the Congolese uh, that had a 10% mortality. And uh, the West African um, a glade seemed to be a milder, uh, but still with mortality and interestingly tended to affect uh, children more than adults. But it well, has been increasing in this recent uh, publication trying to capture this trend uh, shows that in the early 2000s, uh, you might see that there were over uh, 10,000 cases in the Congo. Um, and uh, by the last decade or so, uh, nearly 20,000 with increased numbers elsewhere. And you'll Look back uh, to the United States, which had 47 cases in 2003, which we'll talk about. Now, the monkeypox, as we had understood it, um, does begin often as a papule that evolves into a pustule or a vesicle like lesion um, uh, and then becomes a more classical pox like uh, 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 skin lesion. Of course, there's not just one, there are multiple. You can see here this child who um, had it typically starting on the face, but will spread to the body and uh, reflecting disseminated viremia and also with lesions, which is unusual uh, regarding rashes on the palms and the soles. But this is probably not what will be seen uh, if you do encounter monkeypox, and we'll talk about what's happening in the current outbreak. The reason the WHO is going to rename it is that the animal res reservoir uh, for this virus tends to be in rodents um, and not, not in uh, primates, as far as we know, or monkeys. So uh, I think they're casting about to rena rename it. And humans are a bit of an accidental infection uh, there when they uh, encounter it. And it's any kind of close contact with another human with skin lesions, um, or an animal that might have skin lesions um, or be secreting virus, uh, also contaminated clothing and bedding, uh, much like in smallpox is also capable of uh, transmission. 
Um, probably the reason uh, the face uh, was seen not unusually in children is the thought is it could be respiratory droplet spread. This would be sort of larger droplets, not the kind that we see with measles, uh, where it's aerosolized. And I, I mentioned the 2003 outbreak here, a family that had a pet prairie dog. And this outbreak really was stopped uh, because the implicated vectors were indeed the prairie dogs that somehow had mingled with imported African rodents also acquired as pets, such as Gambian rats. And this was stopped. Uh, uh, but this current outbreak probably can't be put back in the genie bottle, and we'll discuss why that's the case. Now, after exposure, people uh, will begin to experience either symptoms or evidence of rash within a week or two. Now, moving to this current outbreak, which was noted earlier this year, first in uh, Spain and then the United Kingdom, but has been predominantly in Western Europe, but also with a fair number of cases now in the United States, but clearly worldwide. You can see that we're over 10,000 cases, and this no doubt is uh, an underreported illness at this stage. Now, the WHO hasn't raised this to any kind of uh, emergency or pandemic, but uh, the numbers here strongly suggest that we cannot isolate easily and contact trace, especially as we'll discuss how this might be uh, spreading at this time. Now, in the United States, uh, again, as of uh, uh, July 13th, uh, had nearly a thousand patients with greatest numbers in urban centers in California, New York, as well as Illinois, but many states represented, as you can see. Now, uh, what seems to be happening is that monkeypox has gotten into groups of social networks. Predominantly to date, appears to be men who have sex with men. And uh, this spread um, has been contact-based. Uh, I think the health authorities are reluctant at the moment to call it a traditional sexually transmitted disease because you could really just get it by cuddling, for example, and so on. However, um, certainly that's a component. And not everyone becomes ill with this rash. Some people just get the rash. Uh, but you can see on the right hand side, um, you know, the flu like symptoms that one might experience, uh, the skin lesions and chills. So, you know, if you have a viral prodrome, you know, you might think SARS CoV 2 in this stage, a coexistent uh, 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 infection that's on everyone's minds, um, but uh, it may just have the rash as well. Now, uh, the difference here, at least, is uh, many of the skin lesions seen have been either oral with oral ulcers, genital, or uh, proctitis and anal-based lesions that then might spread to the whole body, but may not, and seems to be a, a more limited and not as severe infection as the African monkeypox cases that I showed you earlier. Uh, crusting typically is within a week or two if people have normal immune responses. Now, these are some pictures of uh, the monkeypox skin lesions that have been seen. And you get the idea that, you know, no one's showing you the whole body that's covered. I mean, you have one picture here with some lesions, but it's not, it doesn't seem as prominent. Uh, you do have some idea of some of the classic pox-like vesicles. Uh, and pustules that you see here, and then also some crusting as well. Now, um, if anyone is suspected for monkeypox, I think the uh, best recommendation initially, until they can even be diagnosed, is to isolate to help prevent contact to others. And I've put in a link to the current recommendations for the Centers for Disease Control, which really goes on uh, for several more recommendations, but the concepts are sort of straightforward to anyone that's isolated from SARS-CoV-2. That is, stay by yourself, 
stay in a room, don't visit other people. I also, uh, importantly, don't engage with your pets because this uh, virus can lead to mammals. Um, uh, you may want to wipe down hard surfaces to avoid fomite uh, transmission, um, you know, uh, wash bedding in hot water, don't share utensils. And if, if someone is helping you, uh, make sure that person wears a tight fitting uh, N95 or similar mask uh, uh, to help avoid potential for respiratory droplet transmission, although that doesn't seem to be uh, at least as widely described or possible with the current outbreak. Now, importantly, depending where the lesions occur, especially if it's uh, in the genital or perianal regions, you might want to think about uh, alternative diagnoses, or if you're thinking about herpes simplex or zoster or syphilis, uh, certainly include monkeypox now uh, in that differential. Now, although it might be men who have sex with men and bisexual, uh, people with bisexual partners um, and so on, uh, importantly, I would say it's probably a matter of time to might uh, uh, start spreading to other groups, and getting, including heterosexual spread. So I, I, I think it's probably a matter of time, but of course, uh, we, won't, we don't seem to see that at the moment. Um, uh, LGV or other pox viruses, such as ORF, or if someone's working with vaccinia virus, are all possible. Uh, the diagnosis is straightforward, although is a little easier than it was a month ago. And that is, uh, you'll want um, a, a viral swab, just like we use for respiratory specimens and so on, uh, to secure for RT-PCR, so either fluid or the skin lesion material itself, uh, if you're not getting a swab. Now, you may want to contact your local uh, or state health department, but uh, I know here at Johns Hopkins, we have our own in-house orthopox virus test. Uh, results still need to be confirmed by the CDC. I'm hoping that uh, bottleneck is not um, still uh, to be uniformly the case uh, in the forthcoming months, but that's how it is at the moment, and LabCorp has offered an orthopox test. Uh, of course, this doesn't mean you couldn't have ORF or cowpox or smallpox, of course, which might be the concern of the CDC, uh, even though that uh, seems to be unlikely. Now, the treatment, I will say, seems to be milder, uh, and it's also unclear if it's helpful, and I, I won't go into a lot of details because there's really limited data. And some um, information published last month in Lancet, uh, 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 I think it was Lancet Infectious Diseases, uh, looked at a UK experience from a few years ago where they did use uh, what's called T-pox, which is tychoviramat, uh, as well as brinsidovivir. And really they got little sense of any virologic impact or impact on what seems to be a mild illness. Now, the Centers for Disease Control is advising uh, that anyone who might have atopy, uh, the same kind of things you worried about for smallpox, for those of you uh, that may remember that era, um, immunocompromise, again, a younger children based on the African experience, pregnancy, and so on, uh, would consider treatment. Uh, but I think there's not... Uh, a whole lot of information to really say that it has impact uh, at the moment. Um, uh, these antivirals, the top two are oral and were approved for smallpox. Uh, the CDC uh, does have an EIND for the T-pox. Uh, there's an EIND pending for Bryn Sidofavir, uh, but I've heard from clinicians that have used it in the UK that they're really, uh, it causes a fair amount of liver irritation and LFTs tend to zoom up um, in a mild illness. You may not want that. Um, and uh, the uh, TPOC seems to be better tolerated, but whether there's much impact is unclear. Now, uh, vaccines are uh, something which um, could be used adjunctively perhaps, but really is more for exposures and contacts. And at least as far as I've read, um, I've not heard of a, a case attributed to mortality uh, that had died. 
Now, uh, the prevention of monkeypox, uh, the ACIP earlier before this outbreak had come up with some guidance on two existing vaccines, the so-called modified virus ACAM200, which is live and replicating and has the kind of side effects that, um, uh, you know, do uh, uh, give one pause uh, for administering. And uh, it has been used um, in some of the uh, monkeypox uh, situations in Congo and elsewhere, and it was thought to have about an 85% efficacy in preventing infection after contact. There is a newer one uh, made by a European company that the U.S. has initially a limited supply, although my understanding is by late July, there may be several hundred thousand doses approved now that the manufacturing plant has been um, given an FDA AOK. And the HHS has essentially uh, ordered uh, 4 million doses um, which will be eventually delivered. Now, the vaccine is already being given to risk groups such as men who have sex with men in New York, um, elsewhere. Each state is getting an allocation, so you'll have to check with your state health department how that's uh, being uh, uh, distributed in venues for such. Uh, the CDC, at least in the context of this outbreak, has the following advice uh, to administer the vaccine within four days. If given within four to 14 days, it may lessen the extent of infection, so still perhaps worthwhile. Um, and as of uh, last week, um, the state allotments are going to be based on case numbers, very similar to how uh, medications um, were distributed uh, in COVID by Health and Human Services um, uh, to states for then uh, deciding how to distribute. So although we have uh, certainly the um, current COVID pandemic that's been ongoing for over two years, monkeypox is yet another circumstance of either an emerging uh, infectious disease that if it's not declared a pandemic certainly has global impact. And uh, uh, I'd caution anyone that's evaluating somebody who might be at risk or have a situation for a potential um, STD or chickenpox or uh, varicella-like illness to by all means include this on your differential and for testing. Uh, thankfully, it does appear to be a milder disease um, historically. Um, we don't have uh, true evidence that any of the suggested treatments are helpful and they have to be acquired in uh, a fashion that could be through the state or CDC. Um, you do have to isolate, which is just meant to help limit spread. Luckily, since you have skin lesions, they're a bit easy to identify, at least once they develop. And uh, there should be increasing supply of vaccines for at-risk groups. So I very much thank you for listening. Uh, I will tell you that it's best um, uh, to look at the Centers for Disease Control for recent updates on diagnosis, treatment, and immunization issues. Also, uh, the pocket guides, we seek to update uh, these sorts of topics, such as monkey talk, pox, uh, with frequency, so you can really have the latest information at your fingertips. Thanks very much for listening.